Keeping up with our motto, let learning be a joy and teaching a pleasure, here we are with the remote teaching and learning process to bridge the gap. Happy learning to all students. Welcome students. In today's online session, we are going to continue chapter number 2 of political science that is the electoral process. In the last video, we discussed election commission, its selection and its functions. And today we will learn about the process through which the elections are conducted, restructuring of constituencies, what is the code of conduct, some of the challenges faced during the elections and electoral process, electoral reforms that are required to improve the election process. So let's begin with process of elections. Establishment of constituencies. So, before the general elections, the states in India are divided into territorial constituencies and these constituencies are made on the basis of population of an area. Finalizing voters list, that is must because the name of new voters are added. Nomination of candidates and scrutiny of their nomination forms. It is done just to check whether the information provided by the candidates is accurate and they don't have any criminal background. Election campaign. So, as you know that all the parties, all political parties, they start campaigning before the election. But when they are campaigning, they should follow some rules which is known as code of conduct. Actual voting. So, after the voting is so after this campaigning the actual day of voting comes when people go to the fixed places and cast their vote and after the voting is done the counting of votes starts and results are declared a resolution of disputes regarding elections see if any dispute arises during election then election commission tries to solve that by taking necessary steps Let's move forward and see restructuring of constituencies. So students, the total number of members in Lok Sabha is 543. So it means that there are 543 constituencies of Lok Sabha. Now how these 543 members are elected? So every member represents one constituency. So Within this election commission, there is one body which is known as delimitation commission. So, the work of this body is to decide the constituencies. If the population is more in some areas, then this delimitation commission can further divide that area into small parts and restructure the constituency. So, while doing this, there is no pressure on this commission. So, it means they do all this work freely without the interference of any political party. Now, what is this code of conduct? So, students to ensure that to ensure free and fair elections in India, the election commission has adopted several measures. So, the code of conduct is one of those measures. So, the code of conduct explains the rules that are to be followed by government, political parties and the voters before elections and during elections. Okay. So, we can say that even the government cannot violate these rules. Because of this code of conduct, in the last few decades, election commission has used its power to control malpractices during elections. And due to this strict observance, observance of code of conduct, the com common voters have become confident. Now we will see some of the challenges in conducting free and fair elections. So students, as we know that India has huge population and a number of voters is also huge, big number. So, conducting elections becomes a truly challenging task in such a vast nation. So, election commission has to work in accordance with the law while dealing with these challenges. So, we will discuss some of the challenges 
the first one is misuse of money so it can be seen on a larger extent during elections the election commission has to take several measures to stop such a misuse of money sometimes people just buy votes by giving money the bribe people which is a very wrong practice and which should be stopped many political parties give election tickets to the candidates with criminal background so you can imagine what would be the result of this it not only criminalize the politics but the election commission also faces problem in ensuring that elections are conducted in free environment when such candidates are when such candidates contest the elections and such representatives if they get selected they become our representatives so they will think of their benefit rather than the welfare of common people so it should also be stopped violence during elections so another major major challenge is violence the extent of violence has increased significantly during elections so all political parties should help the election commission to control this violence giving election tickets to relatives so to retain a continuing influence on politics some leaders what they do they give tickets to their own relatives okay so what happened with this it creates a family monopoly in politics see one family control on the whole politics so this is also known as nepotism which should definitely be stopped and every should every person who is we can say who is good who is capable he should get the chance to contest a election next are electoral reforms so as we know that election is a continuous process and the future of democracy depends on elections electoral process becomes reliable if election process gets improved so for that we need some reforms what are those increase participation of women in politics this is must the political party should give 50% candidature to women candidates and try to ensure that they get elected as well don't give candidate to candidates having criminal background as we have already discussed what would be the result of such representatives if they get elected so they should strictly follow the decisions given by the courts in this respect all the political parties they should accept the decision of the courts and should not give candidature to candidates having criminal background the government should take care of election expenses so as we know some rich candidates they spend a lot of money on big rallies on campaigns but all the candidates are not of same status so to ensure that parties will not make misuse of money and mismanagement of money during elections election commission should try to stop all this next is representation of people's act should be amended same why it should be amended so that people having criminal background would not be able to participate in elections so if these steps if re these reforms are done so definitely the election process will be fair and we will get capable representatives let's move forward and see the journey from ballot boxes to evm machines so as we know the first elections in independent india was held in 1951 1952 this was the beginning of shaping of democracy through electoral politics when we started electing our representatives so in the initial elections ballot boxes were used for this purpose of voting okay so the use of evm machines started from the decade of 1990s many things could be achieved because of this voting machine if we see if the voters do not want to vote for any candidate they could choose an option which is known as nota n o t a 
which means none of the above and this uh, this voting machine has become easy for disabled or we can say divyang people they can vote easily using these machines and it has also reduced cutting of trees for paper and thereby helped in the protection of environment which is required in an, it has also been possible to have an early declaration of election results because of this voting machines counting has become easy let's learn one an int one more interesting fact at the time of first elections preparing voters list was a challenging task as many people were illiterate so the special procedure of voting was used during elections what was done 20 lakh steel boxes were made for voting purpose and the election symbols of each and every party was stuck they were stuck on the boxes what the voters had to do they have to put a blank ballot paper in the boxes having the election symbol of the party they wanted to vote for so this system ensured that even the illiterate people could vote so now from that time till now we can see many changes in the election process so before concluding the chapter just see the types of elections there are three types general elections mid term elections and by elections so general elections Lok Sabha elections held after every five years, which are called general elections. Mid term, as you can understand from uh, this word, that if the elected government loses its majority before completing its term in the parliament, or if it, or if the party of the coalition government withdraw their support, if there is a coalition government and one party withdraws its support. it results in the lo loss of majority now if there is no other alternative then elections are held before the fixed time before the completion of the term that's why they are called mid term elections the last one is by elections if an elected representative in lok sabha vidhan sabha in the states or the local self government resigns or due due to his or her death his seat is vacant the elections are held for that vacant seat and this is called a by elections so students today we have learnt about the process code of conduct restructuring of constituencies some challenges electoral reforms and types of elections and the transition from ballot box till evm machines so that's all for today i hope you understood everything thank you Thank you so much.